In the previous module 8.1, we had given a complete derivation of the Kalman filter where the dynamics is linear and the observations are linear functions of state. This is the classical LQG problem. We, we gave a complete derivation of the Kalman filter equations and we illustrated profusely with a scalar example. We talked about the evolution of model forecast without observation. Then we brought an observation we did the Kalman filter derivation. We also analyzed the properties of the growth rate of forecast errors and examined under what condition the forecast errors will converge. And, and then we also talked about stability of the filter in terms of what happens to the errors in the stability of the filter. You can, you can readily see this analysis provides a complete characterization uh, uh, of the behavior of Kalman filter equation the classical Kalman filter. So, when we say Kalman filter we essentially mean application of the filtering equations in the case of linear dynamics and linear observations linear observations linear in this state. So, that is the classical LQG. Now, in the early days when Kalman filter was implemented especially one of the earliest application was in space travel. The onboard computers had only 8 bit they had only 8 bit processors. So, when you do arithmetic in 8 bit processors that could be errors due to round off. One way to be able to improve the quality of computation is to be able to reduce the conditioning numbers for matrices that are involved. Uh, one way to reduce the conditioning uh, condition number for matrix, uh, matrices is to consider square root versions of the matrices instead of the matrix themselves. So, what kind of matrices we are involved in? We are involved in forecast covariance analysis covariance. These matrices ha if it happens to be a large condition number that could be difficulties coming from numerical instabilities. So, in order to be able to induce numerical stability in the uh, mid in the early to mid 60s it, it it was felt that one needs to be able to improve the conditioning of the calculations in order to improve the overall stability and accuracy of the solutions calculated. That led to what is called square root filters. Since we have derived the Kalman filter equation within the covariance setup it is called covariance square root filter. I also want to remind you the inverse of the covariance is called information. So, one could readily derive the Kalman filter equation in the information form or the in, that is called information filter. Once I in other words instead of working with the uh, covariance we will simply work with the inverse of the covariance. While the if the if the covariance is symmetric positive definite its inverse is also symmetric positive definite. So, both the covariance and its inverse namely the information matrix all have positive square root. So, we have covariance square root information square root these are some of the different versions in which Kalman filter equations can be readily and easily uh, written. Uh, the square root versions in general have better stability properties and we are going to give a, an argument how to derive the Kalman filter equations within the framework of covariance square root filters. So, that is the uh, aim of this module there is also another motivating aim sooner we will go into what is called nonlinear filters. Nonlinear filters are very very difficult problems to solve we can only approximate. In the case of nonlinear filters we will also introduce an approximation one form of approximation using what is called ensemble filters. There is a natural connection between ensemble realizations of filters um, with co covariance uh, square root filter. So, it is also for that reason we would like to uh, 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 educate the reader with respect to 
the derivation of the Kalman filter equations not in the covariance form, but in the square root of the covariance form. So, that leads to covariance square root filter. Please recall square root of a symmetric positive definite matrix A can be given in one of three ways one is using Cholesky another is using a yes, symmetric uh, square root version and solving the symmetric square root version using a Newton's method another one is called the eigenvalue decomposition. For simplicity in calculation to illustrate basic ideas we would either use Cholesky or eigen decomposition whichever is convenient for discussion. In this particular case we are going to be dependent on the eigenvalue eigen decomposition based square root version. Please go back to the previous case <coughs> x bar is a matrix. So, this is x bar times this. So, this could be written as this this is this is going to be written as x bar times x bar transpose that x bar matrix x bar. So, this must be actually x bar is equal to x times lambda to the power half. Lambda to the power half is the square root of the diagonal matrix that consists of Eigen values. Since the matrix A is positive definite all the Eigen values are positive square root exists. So, this is how uh, the, the, the matrix square root is defined. So, we are going to use the matrix square root <coughs> derived from Eigen decomposition in our discussion of the covariance square root filter derivation. So, let <coughs> So, let me quickly talk about the uh, covariance matrix and the properties. If A is a matrix A x i is equal to lambda i lambda A is S P D. So, all the eigenvalues are positive. So, this can be written succinctly as A x 1 x n x 1 x n x 2 to diagonal. So, that becomes this the matrix x is such that it is orthogonal. Therefore, by exploring this property I can get a, decom a multiplicative decomposition lambda is lambda to the power half lambda to the power half. So, I can get a decomposition which is x bar this is that and that is also equal to in, in, in component form lambda i times x i x i transpose. So, this is the crux of the Eigen decomposition <coughs> I, this is the crux of the Eigen decomposition. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to talk about uh, two things full rank as well as reduced rank formulation. What do you mean by full rank reduced rank formulation? If I took all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the sum that is called the full rank. So, this is the full rank factorization. Now, in here we are going to assume all the eigenvalues 1 to r are large from r plus 1 to n are small. <laughs> it can also be shown that the trace of the matrix A which is a which is a covariance matrix. So, if A is a covariance matrix A is SPD trace of A is equal to sum of all the eigenvalues i is equal to 1 to n. So, I can divide this into two summation um, into a summation of two parts i 1 is equal to r lambda i plus summation lambda i is equal to i is equal to r plus 1 to n. If this is small compared to this approximate this by i is equal to 1 to r lambda i. Therefore, I am going to take only the first r columns corresponding to the first r eigenvalues. So, this is the matrix of first r eigenvalues where r is a number which is less than r equal to 1, 1 is less than r equal to r. So, r lies in this region. If r lies in this region, now I can approximate a using the product of x bar and x bar transpose. Please understand the rank of this matrix is r. So, this is what is called rank r approximation to a.
rank or approximation to A. Why are we talking about rank or approximation? Because it also comes from the computational demands. If the matrix is very large and if the eigenvalues are such that 1 to k up to m, if the eigenvalues falls very sharply like this, it can be shown that the that the sum of the eigenvalues, the sum of the first r eigenvalues, that means the sum of the first r eigenvalues i is equal to r 1 to r divided by sum of i is equal to 1 to n lambda i which is the this is the, this is the total sum versus partial sum if this is greater than or equal to 90 percent let us say. That means 90 percent of the information are contained in the first r eigenvalues or it could be 95 percent. 95 percent of the information are contained in the first r values. So, the value of r will depend on the kind of percentage you are interested in, the kind of approximations you are willing to accept. So, if I consider the full rank I will have 100 percent of the variance accounted for. If I am going to go for a reduced rank I am going to neglect eigenvectors corresponding to very small values of eigen very small eigenvalues. So, we can <coughs> we can we can talk about rank r approximation. So, in e, in this case x i x i transpose is a rank 1 matrix a sum of r rank 1 matrices gives you a rank r approximation. Um, now, please realize these eigen val eigen vectors to start with they are all linearly independent. So, any the first subset of r are also linearly independent. So, this is these are all the choices one has in terms of approximation. So, we talk about two things now I want to go back to where we are. We started with the A positive definite matrix we got an eigen decomposition we also got a square root version of A A is equal to x bar times x bar transpose that is a square root. Now, we are trying to interpose another idea if in in practice the eigen values falls off very sharply like this the last eigen values the sum of these uh, very small eigenvalues do not add up much. So, we may be able to cut off at a decent value r. The r is decided by the amount of uh, the, 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 the ratio of the sum of the first r eigenvalues to the total sum of all the eigenvalues. So, if I can explain 90 percent of the variance if I can explain 95 percent of the variance the r will vary between 90 or 91 95 or 99. So, that is something you start with the level of approximation you are willing to accept to start with. <coughs> so, given that I can define so you, you, you decide the number of percentage you are comfortable with based on that I can fix the uh, value of r once I have the value of r then I can pick the first r eigenvalues <coughs> and, and consider an eigen eigen uh, uh, approximation to A. So, A can be approximated by a product of two rank R matrices. So, that is which is called reduced rank approximation to the square root. Re reduced rank approximation obtained by appropriately selecting the, the, the columns that go into the definition of the square root matrix. <laughs> Now, we are <coughs> so that is one way to be able to reduce the rank. Why would you reduce the rank? If the computation of the full rank becomes too difficult, too expensive, we may settle for an approximation. The approximation could be or rank approximation. So, that is one thought. So, what is that we have done? We have simply explained one form of taking square roots one form of taking reduced rank square roots these are simply ideas by which I can deal with um, full rank square root or reduced rank square square root. The advantage of eigenvalue decomposition based uh, uh, square root allows for this flexibility of being able to consider a square root of full rank or reduced rank that is the that is the key message of 
the first four slides of this module. Now, I am going to go back to using Cholesky factor as a square root. So, we are going to use Cholesky factorization. So, this means we are going to be talking about full rank. <coughs> so, let forecast covariance at time k, I am still concerned with the, the, the Kalman filter. Please recall Kalman we would like to be able to rewrite the Kalman filter equation in the covariance square root form. So, that is simply the product of the Cholesky factor S k f and S k f transpose. Please understand the Cholesky factors A is equal to G G transpose where G is lower triangular G transpose is upper triangular. So, in this case S k f is a lower triangular square root of P k f and, and its transpose is S k f transpose. So, this is simply a Cholesky factorization of the forecast covariance. Likewise, I have the analysis covariance its square root. So, we are going to rewrite the Kalman filter equation instead of p k f using s k f instead of using p k hat I am going to rewrite it using s k hat. I am also trying to get a square root factor for q k which is equal to x k q and s k q transpose. So, in here s k f s k hat and s k q are all lower triangular are all lower triangular matrices and it is lower triangular matrix times its transpose. Now, uh, let us try to consider the forecast of the covariance matrix under the Kalman filter derivation that we already have done. The forecast covariance at time k plus 1 depends on the analysis covariance at time k. Now, replace the forecast covariance by its square root, replace the model noise covariance by its square root. So, you can readily see m k times the square root times m k transpose plus the product of the 2 Cholesky factors, the lower triangular and upper triangular part of q k plus 1. This can be written, rewritten in the matrix form as m k s k hat plus x k plus 1 q and the transpose of that. So, you can readily see that the product this this equal to this product and that product is equal to that. Now, I am going to concoct a new matrix which is x k plus 1 bar f which is given by this matrix. So, this matrix according to this is x k plus 1 therefore, p k plus 1 has this form of Cholesky factor. So, what does this tell you? This essentially tells you that if I have a Cholesky factor expression for p k hat, if I have a Cholesky ex fact, um, uh, uh, expression for q k plus 1, I can get the corresponding Cholesky factor for the forecast covariance which is given by this equation. each of these equations they are all n by n, they are all n by n, they are all n by n. But however, this equation uh, uh, that describes the covariance of the uh, uh, square root of the covariance of the forecast is unfortunately is a matrix of size n by 2 n. n by 2 n is not a square matrix, n by 2 n is a rectangular matrix, it has doubled the number of columns as the rows that is undesirable. So, while we are interested in keeping the square root, we cannot allow the expansion for the size of the matrices. Here the expansion for the size of the matrices is essentially comes from the fact that the forecast covariance is sum of two terms one coming from the analysis covariance another coming from another coming from the, the, the model uh, uh, error or model noise covariance. So, this doubling of the column increases the storage as well as time. We cannot allow this to happen. So, we have to reduce it back to n by n matrix. Computationally, it is required to reduce n by n matrices. Therefore, when we try to reduce an n, n, n by 2 n matrix to n by n matrix, we have to 
take care of the fact that we do not lose any information. So, this must be yeah, information lossless transformation while I am trying to compress the number of columns from 2 n to n. That is the that is the that is the goal. This can be done very easily by the method that we already know that is called Gram Schmidt orthogonalization process, which we saw in the context of QR decomposition. So, what is the basic idea? If Q uh, in this case, because my x k bar, please please understand my x k bar f k plus 1, my x k bar x k plus 1 is a matrix of size n by 2 n. The corresponding q I would like to be able to uh, be of the size 2 n by n with orthogonal columns and the property q transpose q is, is, is the q transpose q is i q transpose q is i that is the that is the condition we need that means let us look at this now s k plus 1 f bar belongs to r n by 2 n. So, therefore, s bar k plus 1 f transpose is a 2 n by n matrix this matrix has more columns than rows. So, this matrix is it looks like So, this essentially corresponds to the uh, the over determined case of H that we have used in the, in the context of static inverse problems. So, this is this matrix is a rectangular matrix with double the number of rows than the number of, 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 of columns Q is a matrix again 2 n by n. I would like to be able to now get a matrix x k plus 1 f. So, here what is the condition? I would like to get a matrix x k plus 1 f that is also n n by n. So, the left hand side is given I have to find a q and a s k plus 1 such that this equation can be satisfied that is a classical q r decomposition method that is a classical q r uh, 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 decomposition method q r decomposition method by in applying to this matrix x k plus 1 bar f transpose. So, I am going to apply the q r decomposition to this the q r decomposition will then deliver a q and an x k plus 1 I am sorry there is no bar here s k plus 1 that it will deliver an s k plus 1 f this will be an n by n matrix this will be a 2 n by n matrix. So, with these two uh, now you can readily see I am I am I am trying to move towards reducing an n by 2 n matrix to n by n matrix to see that what is that we would like to do we would like to be able to consider the old expression for k plus p k plus 1 f which is equal to x k plus 1 bar f times its transpose this comes from the previous slide. Now, I have expressed the x k plus 1 f using the q r decomposition <coughs> q transpose q is i therefore, it reduces to this. So, you can now readily see by using the trick of q r decomposition on the expanded matrices I can now compress the matrix back to n by n. So, this is an additional step I have to do if I want to keep track of the full rank. So, here in comes some of the challenges in Kalman filter equation when you want to rewrite from the covariance form to the um, covariance square root form. Again I would like to remind you why do we go from covariance to covariance square root form simply because I would like to be able to increase the conditioning and what is the conditioning the condition the conditioning for a square root is much better than the condition for the original matrix that is a very well known result that is a very well known result why is that. So, we have expressed p k plus 1 in terms of uh, square root of 2 n by n by n, um, uh, 2 n, by n matrices. <coughs> so, with this we come back to rewriting the filter in, in, in terms of square root matrices given now x k 
bar x k uh, x x k hat s k hat s k plus 1 q these are the two square roots of the analysis and the uh, analysis and the model noise. I am going to now consider the forecast up this is the forecast. So, instead of updating the forecast covariance I am going to update the square root of the forecast covariance. The square root of the forecast covariance is related to analysis and, and, and we have already broken them down therefore, therefore x k plus 1 f is equal to x k plus 1 bar q transpose that is given by this times that and this product is going to give us the required Cholesky decomposition as we have seen in the previous slide as we have seen in the previous slide. The data simulation step now consists of the Kalman gain the data simulation step consists of the Kalman gain it is the forecast covariance the Kalman gain can be written in the square root in the using the square root forms. Now, I am going to change the matrices h k x k the product that comes in here I am going to call it a. So, this I can rewrite also as 8 transpose times a using the same notation and using the same factorization for p k plus 1 therefore, k k now gets this form and this form is the square root version of the Kalman gain. So, we have come to a square root version of the Kalman gain and I can now substitute in the analysis covariance this is the analysis covariance form again I can substitute simplify this like this. Now, I can express this in the square root form I can express this in the square root form I, I already have a square root form expression for k k plus 1 in the previous slide by combining them all I get the square root form for the analysis covariance. So, to complete the square root version I simply need to be able to compute the square root of the term which is in the bracket. So, I would like to be able to get the square root algorithm to factorize the n by n matrix inside the the, the, the square bracket. In order to be able to do that look at this now i minus a times a transpose a plus r k inverse a transpose that is the matrix whose square root I am interested in. This has to be done in, in a couple of st uh, stages first compute b as a solution of first compute b as a solution of a transpose a r plus r k plus 1 please understand the b will then give us b will then give us a transpose a plus r k plus 1 inverse a transpose. If you go back to the previous step that is the expression which is which is one of the parts of the which is which is one of the part of the equation that I already have. So, this is the part that we are now concerned with and that is computed by solving a linear system. This linear system is solved again by use of Cholesky again by using Cholesky. Please understand even though I need the inverse I, I in even though the expression uses the inverse I do not want the inverse I want the product the product is simply the solution of A transpose A plus R k plus 1 times b is equal to a transpose you simply solving the system of linear equations to get this. So, once you get b the term going back to the previous line p k plus 1 is equal to x k plus 1 the term within parenthesis s k plus 1 f transpose. So, I need to be able to find the square root of the term within the parenthesis and and in order to find the square root of the term within the parenthesis once I find b. I need to be able to find the square root of i minus a b i minus a b. Uh, uh, so, I know what a is I now know what b is multiply a b subtract from i and then find the square root this square root also can be applied by using Cholesky factorization. Substituting all this back 
I have x k plus 1 c c transpose this. I am now going to define x k plus 1 hat times x k plus 1 hat transpose where s k plus 1 hat is equal to s k plus 1 f times c. So, this is one of the fundamental equations in the square root operations to find c. So, the key is to find c to find c I have to do a factorization here and to find b I have to solve a linear system. So, by doing steps 1, 2 and 3 I can find c. So, c what does it do? It essentially transforms the forecast square root covariance matrix to the analysis square root covariance. So, the from forecast to analysis <laughs> from forecast to analysis the transformation is obtained by multiplying the forecast square root by c on the right where c is obtained by solution of 1 and 2. So, with this I have now come to the uh, summary of the square root algorithm square root version of the classical Kalman filter equation. The model equation is given by this observation is given by that the forecast is given by classical Kalman filter. The I am assuming I am available I, I have availability square root of the analysis. I am also assuming the availability of square root of the model noise. Q is available from the the Q R decomposition which is the Gram Schmidt orthogonalization. So, by doing a Gram Schmidt orthogonalization on this matrix I get S k plus 1 f please remember Q transpose Q is I. Now, I am going to go to the data simulation step the data simulation step essentially the same as the previous one except that I am going to express k k in the square root version where please remember a k is given by this and x k plus 1 hat is equal to x k plus 1 f times c where c is equal to i minus a b and, and, and b is equal to a transpose a plus r k plus 1 whole inverse times a transpose. So, this essentially gives you the forecast part this essentially gives the analysis part this step takes care of the fork of the square root this step uh, this step takes care of the far square root this step also takes care of the square root. So, this is the summary of the square root version of the Kalman filter equation. You can see there are lots of mathematical ideas, but everything rests on the ability to be able to compute the square root of a covariance matrix. So, and transformation that are needed to compress the expansion. So, by combining the square root and the ability to do a QR decomposition I can in fact derive the square root version of the Kalman filter. It was this kind of a square root version of the Kalman filter was that was implemented in the Apollo mission that led to a very successful ability to track and, and that is one of the major uh, uh, applications <laughs> of the Kalman filter equations in, 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 in space exploration. So, given that as a background <laughs> now I am going to talk about what is called Potter's algorithm. Potter's algorithm is further simplification of the <coughs> application of the square root version of the uh, uh, square root version of the Kalman filter equation. To be able to illustrate the, the Potter's algorithm I am going to assume m is 1 that means observation I have only one sim single scalar, uh, scalar observation. So, h k is <coughs> the, st the state is the state is still n, n by n, n by m m m m vector. So, z is equal to h times x this is a scalar this is 1 by 1 therefore, this is 1 by n times n by 1 <coughs> r k this is r sub k r sub k 
which is the variance of the scalar observation is r. So, the forecast step is the same <coughs> the forecast step is the same as the general equation that we have given in the previous slide. Now, I would like to be able to look at the simplification that results when m is 1 in the analysis step. So, h k plus 1 p k plus 1 h k plus 1 is equal to this that is a scalar. So, a which is given by h k plus 1 s k plus 1 f transpose this is equal to h times that that is simply a column vector. So, a is a column vector. So, a transpose a is a scalar r is a scalar. So, alpha is a scalar alpha is given by this. So, a transpose a plus r is 1 by 1 over alpha therefore, a transpose a is equal to 1 over alpha minus r which is equal to given by this. Therefore, I can write the Kalman gain in this particular case as k k plus 1 is equal to alpha times s k plus 1 a which is again a column vector. So, the covariance matrix analysis covariance matrix can be written like this. Now, please please realize x k plus 1 f times 1 minus alpha times a a transpose um, I am sorry this is not 1 is identity times a a transpose <coughs> this is identity times a a transpose. So, in this particular case in this particular case the <coughs> a is a column vector a transpose is a is a row vector. So, this is an outer product matrix alpha is a is a constant. So, i minus constant times um, a matrix times this. So, this is this this is the expression for the forecast covariance uh, I am sorry analysis covariance at time at time k plus 1 please remember I am I am talking about the I am talking about the data simulation step co compute the Kalman gain and, and, and the analysis covariance in here. Now, <coughs> if I want to be able to so this is um, this factor in this case is already a square root form this factor is already a square root form. So, to get a square root I need to consider square root of only the term within the parenthesis the analysis is very similar to the general case we talked about. So, the square root of this matrix i minus alpha times a a transpose is equal to I would like to be able to express it as a square of the matrix with the change in constant beta. If I would like to be able to make this equal to the square of this matrix I have the relation this relation that essentially helps us to be able to find uh, uh, beta. <coughs> Let us go back and, and, and remind ourselves all the a is a column vector. So, so a a transpose is is, 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 is is a rank 1 matrix. So, this that is what we are now trying to talk about. So, uh, this relation essentially implies i minus alpha times a transpose is equal to 1 minus 2 beta a a transpose plus beta square a a transpose a a a transpose because of the square involved because of the square involved. So, I would like to be able to I would like to be able to uh, <coughs> find an uh, relation between alpha and beta and that essentially it also. So, by equating by equating these two sorry by equating by equating these two I would like to be able to express beta in terms of alpha and that gives rise to the relation that alpha and beta must be related to this alpha and beta must be related to that. <coughs> Look at uh, alpha and beta are related to that in other words I am going to equate both sides the corresponding terms. So, minus alpha must be equal to minus 2 beta times beta square times a transpose a a transpose a is a scalar. So, this this term can be written succinctly as beta square a transpose a times a a transpose. So, a a transpose is the term that I am equating there is a a, a transpose here there is a, a transpose here. So, if I consider the coefficients and equate the coefficients of a a transpose terms on both sides I get this equality 
that equality implies that beta and alpha must stand in relation which is the equation which is related by that equation. <laughs> now, please understand A transpose A is a scalar, A transpose A is a scalar therefore, this becomes a quadratic equation in beta this is a quadratic equation in beta. The solution for the quadratic equation is given by this. <coughs> so, if I substitute back and unwind all the expressions I get beta is given by this expression. I can now substitute the matrix within this as 1 my uh, i minus beta times a a transpose square because I have found the square root of that. I have found the square root of that that essentially gives you the analysis square root is, is the forecast square root multiplied by this and this plays the role of the C matrix that we have talked about in the previous slides. That is the transformation that is the transformation therefore, <coughs> SK plus 1 is equal to uh, a, a PK plus 1 hat is equal to SK plus 1 hat times SK plus 1 hat s k plus 1 hat transpose therefore, this is the forecast uh, this is the analysis analysis covariance analysis covariance square root analysis covariance square root. So, we have now a very simple factorization scheme when there is only a one scalar observation. I do not have to take a matrix square root matrix square root is more expensive than scalar valued square root operations. So, that is the advantage of considering when m is equal to 1. How do we apply this m is equal to 1 to a general case? In general case m, my observation is a m vector this is given by this. Now, I am going to consider my v the covariance of v is r r can be expressed as a product of l and it transpose that is a Cholesky decomposition. If you multiply both sides by l inverse I get a new equation for the observation. So, this becomes the new equation for the observation and what is the point of this observation? What is the point of this observation? Uh, the, the covariance of v bar this must be v bar the covariance of v bar is equal to expected value of v bar v bar transpose that is equal to L inverse covariance of v times L that is equal to i. So, what does this mean? This may essentially means the, the noise covariance is identity. If noise covariance is identity, so what is that we have? Z is equal to I am sorry z bar is equal to h bar x plus v bar v bar is a normal norm uh, 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 noise vector with 0 mean and i as, as the identity matrix as the covariance. Therefore, there is no correlation between z i and z the no correlation between z bar i and z bar j and i not equal to j when i, I not equal to j if because these things are not correlated. Now, I could consider z bar 1, z bar 2 and z bar m that is z bar is equal to that and I could consider now each of these observations as a single observation. So, there are yum single observations I can try to um, I can try to successively um, um, assimilate each of these observations by the Potter's algorithm that we have given in the previous case. Therefore, instead of assimilating all of them together that involves matrix operations I can by 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 doing this transformation. Uh, try to convert the problem into one of assimilating m <coughs> sorry one of assimilating m scalar observations. So, um, it is this ability to convert uh, 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 using uh, uh, the transformation which is the L inverse 
is called whitening transformation. What is whitening? Before the transformation V had covariances that means V i and V j may be co correlated, but after the transformation V bar i and V bar j are not uh, correlated. So, in here please, uh, please, please realize in here in here the the V bar V bar is equal to V bar i I am sorry V bar 1 V bar 2 all the way up to V bar m and any two, if you take any two of them they are not correlated. Therefore, I can consider the vector to be made up of m single uncorrelated observation. If there are m single uncorrelated observation I can apply the Potter's formula one at a time. So, I start with the uh, uh, forecast you assimilate the first component you get an analysis then start with that analysis assimilate the second component then you get another analysis. You start with that second analysis ab, 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 assimilate the third observation you get the third analysis. Likewise if you if you assimilate all the m components one at a time starting from a forecast in m steps you will get the ultimate analysis that that takes advantage of uh, uh, that that takes advantage of all the yum individual observations that are arising out of whitening transformation. So, this way uh, one can bring in simplicity into the cal cal computation by using suitable transformations. Now, we have talked about several different types of transformation in this uh, uh, <coughs> lecture. In this lecture we have talked about <coughs> square root transformation of matrices q r decomposition to be able to reduce the reduce or compress in a lossless way the 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 the, the, the resulting square roots. And here we are also talking about the notion of Potter's algorithm and how to apply Potter's algorithm component wise by doing what is called a whitening transformation or whitening filter. What is a whitening filter? If I pass a, a correlated noise through a whitening filter the output becomes uncorrelated in the sense that in the sense that V was correlated V bar the components of V bar are uncorrelated. This ability to transform a noise vector that is a correlated uh, covariance matrix to an uncorrelated covariance matrix and the output that is called the whitening filter by applying the whitening filter we are able to reduce the problem of assimilating a vector of m observation to assimilating a sequence of scalar updates of m single observations. <coughs> so, the assimilation step is broken down into m simple steps where you simply take the square roots of scalars as opposed to taking square roots of matrices. The total time required to compute the square roots of matrices can be much larger. Therefore, if you could apply Potter's algorithm it could greatly simplify the, 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 the analysis not only that uh, it also improves the conditioning of the of the calculation conditioning of the matrices which in turn tries to induce the stability of, of, of the computations. With that uh, 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 we come to the end of the discussion of this covariance square root filter uh, this is covered in chapter 20 eight of our book and 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 um, there are enough number of exercises one has to perform in trying to verify all these things that is why I have not given you any additional exercises trying to verify all the calculations in here are themselves an exercise. I hope you have come to appreciate the notion of what type of square root to use. Do I use full rank approximation or partial rank approximation? If I were to do a square root version of this uh, of covariance how got how these transformations are, al are aligned. <coughs> then if I want to be able to incorporate one observation at a time how Potter's algorithm come to the rescue. So, by use of whitening transformation and Potter's algorithm we can further simplify the assimilation of vector observations. So, that is the overall summary of this module. Thank you very much. <coughs>